Hey, I'm Matt Hudgen and he's Dave Mulvaney. Dave, how you doing today? Oh, this is Profitability MD. Gosh, I'm already starting off to a rough start. <laughs> it is Matt and I think um, this is episode 45, as bad as I am. Uh, Good <laughs> Lord, that's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, we've been at this a little while and we're on, uh, on iTunes and um, under Profitability MD. So that's exciting, but Matt, we're going to talk about how to lose money after the sale today because of what happened to you. Um, how to lose money after the sale. I love it. So this is great. So um, I had, uh, so let's talk about all the positives. What worked? They did a great job right up, you know, we talked about delivering a wow experience. They did a great job and we talked about, you got so to. Let's, let's, let's pause for a minute. You were having, you, we, we, we mentioned this a while back. You had some quotes to get windows installed at your house. And let's talk about the sales experience that got you to the buying experience. So let's start there with, uh, with this particular company that you ended up buying from. How yeah. did they sell you on the concept? Yeah, and that, so we've talked about that before about you know, identifying your target market, but then you gotta educate and motivate um, your clientele, and then you make irresistible offers. So they do a great job, I mean, just a beautiful job. So you have a, a technician come out here talk about your windows and they talk about windows and yada, yada, yada. But then he has uh, on his iPad, he has basically a video that we watched. And the video is basically the sales presentation or the educate and motivate portion, right? Where they're telling you, here are all the things to consider about windows. You want, I don't even know all this stuff, right? High insulation value and heat value and durability. And here's why, you don't want wood because they, they were selling some other, it's not wood, it's some other product, but they're educated. And meanwhile, the, 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 I say a kid, the technician, you know, leaves me and Patty in front of the iPad while we watch this video to educate and motivate ourselves. And he goes and does the measurements of the windows and, you know, whatever he's doing, right? And so it was, that was really awesome because that is a professionally done video, professionally done sales letter, however you want to call it professionally done educate and motivation video, um, which was absolutely superb. And that's a great way for them to assure that every salesperson is delivering the same message, right? Because you're not counting on the, the technician to deliver the sales pitch. They're using the video. Okay. So I want to stop there for a minute because it's something that, um, that I think is critical for a business owner to think about for a minute here. You, the, the company sent a technician to the job but yet you're able to deliver a marketing message. This is why copywriting and marketing are so important because if you have the right marketing message and you get it in front of the right audience, you don't need a salesperson. You know, you end up, you make a sale. It's, um, we talked about this last week about how, you know, when you go to Walmart, you buy something, you walk up to the register Everything happened before you walk to the register. The sale is just part of the process. It makes you whip out your credit card or your debit card and you buy. So that's what that video was designed to do is to take you through, actually, if it's a sales letter, a psychological process to get you to the point of purchase, of the point of decision. Let's call it the point of decision. Right, the point of decision, exactly. And not necessarily the point of uh, purchase because you can also decide not to. The timing's not right. But the point of decision, that's where you want, where you hit the fork in the road. And like Yogi Berra says, when you hit, find a fork in the road, take it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, but th so the, the video, that's all I wanted to break in and say. Here they designed a video so a technician, not a salesperson, a technician could go in and say, Mr. Hutchins, please watch this video with your wife while I go and stand outside in the driveway and have three cigarettes and then I'll come back. Right. I do some measurements. Yeah. But I, but I thought about this afterwards in that what a great way to assure, I never thought about it. And you're, you're saying, look, now you, now your technician is a salesperson because they just have to have an iPad with them. That's great. I was thinking more of a consistency of message. Like you were saying, get a good copywriter who puts together a good video sales letter for lack of a better term, a video sales letter. And now you are positive that that message gets delivered every time. Um, uh, I could use something like that in my business. Um, uh, we had an HVAC guy. Remember we did that, or I did that earlier this year. You could have an HVAC guy. I could have watched a HVAC video on why you need a new HVAC unit or why a new unit's better than just whatever, switching out a piece of it or something like that, right? Um, that you could have a video sales letter for almost any 
job, position, right? Uh, product, good news? Uh, you, you technically should have a, a video sales letter for any type of job position. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna branch off, just so hold the thought for a second. I, when um, back in like 2010 uh, or 2009, I guess it was, um, I bought a, a Mercedes S550. What made me buy the S550 is I saw a video online of a, of a Mercedes S550 on the Autobahn and it crashed. And this car like flipped like, I don't know, 20 times. And, and then it's, it's laying on its side. And then like it's on the surveillance cameras on the Autobahn. And then you see this old, older guy, probably 70 years old, climb out of the, literally out of the driver door window and get down on the ground and sit on the median and just sit there and wait and wait for somebody to show up. This guy flipped the car 20. I'm like, that's the car I want. Okay. That's safety. There's a good safety video, right? Of course it had the Mercedes Benz logo at the end of the video. So Mercedes was promoting that video, which wasn't theirs. Technically they probably had to buy it from the surveillance system on the Autobahn, but what a, once again, Anybody could have sold a Mercedes if you're looking for a, um, a safe automobile. In this case, your technician, if you give them the tools, it could be anybody, they can make the sale if they have the tools. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about once you get the customer's money, how do you lose money after that? How do you lose money? Right. So then we talk about, remember we talked about you got to attract a new client. So they had attracted me as a client, me and my wife, and we bought the windows and they're coming over to install the windows. And so now you have to deliver, you got to deliver your service, deliver your product. And I call it deliver the wow experience. And so these guys were fantastic, right? So they come over to put in the windows. I had eight windows done. Really, it's just the front of the house. So it's a whole different story, but just in the front of the house, it was great. You know, they put on the little booties when they come inside. Um, they swept up after themselves, kept everything clean, and they got all the windows put in in one day, less than one day. I forget what time they got here, but they were done by two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon. Eight windows all put in, all perfectly sealed. It was beautiful. So almost a fantastic wow experience. Deliver. Here's where they fall short. Here's where they fall short. And so these guys, by the way, do windows all the time. I'm assuming that there's a crew that comes out here and is doing somebody else's house tomorrow and somebody else's house the day, day after that, right? When they're done and, they, and the, house, the windows are done, they're beautiful, but they're not painted to match the trim on my house, right? Because we got a little different color trim. And they messed up the, the contacts for my window alarm system. I guess it's called contacts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. And so they, they walk out the door. And I got an unpainted, beautiful window, but it's unpainted. And I got an alarm that I can't set anymore that's beeping at me because the contacts aren't working properly. And so I was flabbergasted. That's a really funny word. I was just in shock on, on how easy it would have been for them to finish up the wow experience. It's, it's like they did everything right. I mean, like I said, little booties keep up, clean up after themselves. There's no debris. I mean, it was absolutely awesome but you're leaving me with an incomplete product, right? I don't care that I got new windows put in, which is obviously all they cared about. I wanted windows that matched and my alarm that fit, that worked, I should say, right? Yeah. So we were saying beforehand, there could have, two things they could have easily done, right? They could have provided me a checklist. Hey, by the way, we put in windows all the time. Things to consider is you might need to find a painter to match your trim. Number two, if you have an alarm, which looks like you do because the technician should have known that, uh, by the way, you're going to need to redo your alarm contacts for your window. And then, so they could at least had a checklist to make me aware of it or two, an easy referral for them. I mean, they could have had somebody's nephew be a painter that just follows this crew around. Right. And for whatever, 500 bucks, finish painting my windows that match the trim or whatever. Uh, or an alarm guy that goes and puts stuff up and maybe converts me to using him as the alarm guy. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, um, the, when I, in, in my baseball copywriting, I, I have a, a, a free course, which kind of takes copywriting as a, and I use baseball, the baseball diamond as a methodology. But I talk about first base being about rapport. When you build rapport with a client, 
um, really good rapport, you move to second base, which is where trust is established. Now, the reason I like the baseball diamond is because you can go around the bases as many times as you want, provided when you make the sale, which happens between third base and home, right? Okay. Provided when you make the sale that you perform and you retain the client's trust. As long as you retain the client's trust, you can go around the bases with them again. It's very hard to go around the bases with the same client if you lost trust. Now, in this case, it may not be a total lost cause, but it's certainly the, this, this company has the opportunity to learn from this if you right. tell them. Most people won't tell them. They won't come back. So it will find out about this company in the next couple of weeks. Will they call you? Will they have follow-up? Will they say, were you happy with, you know, what went on? And then you say, no, I felt like you left me hanging with my alarm system and left me hanging with my paint. It didn't mean you have to do that, but you should have at least told me going in that I had to prepare for this and they didn't do that for you. They didn't do that. And that's, and that's awesome because I was thinking, you know, fortunately, we got an alarm guy who was able to come over here in, in, in a day or two, and I had a painter that was available in the day or two. But that's just because I have resources because we just redid this house, so we know all these these subs. But if it was my mother, right, and, my, and they redid the windows at my mom's house or one of my older clients who doesn't have access to those people, you know, it might have taken them a month to find a painter and an alarm person to kind of come fix things up. And, you know, and it's – go ahead. Okay, no, go ahead. So I was just saying, it's like, it's so easy, you know, you, to, you got to think the whole wow experience through. So I was talking about the wow experience through one of my dentists that I'm coaching. And I said, you got to think of it from the, the time that patient calls in to set the appointment to then they walk in the front door. Do you know them by name? You walk them back to the chair. How pleasant is that? What are they looking at? To the conversation that takes place with the hygienist while they're in the chair, to the dentist, um, inspecting the teeth to the hygienist or the assistant walking you back up front for the checkout to setting the next appointment to walking out the door that that's the wow experience and every contact point along the way is a chance to exceed expectations of in that case a patient in, in my expectation for the windows they did everything fantastic except you know walking me to the door they, they, they left me hanging with unpainted windows and in, in a non-working alarm. And I was saying it would have been easy. They could have somebody's nephew be the painter, right? Yeah, they could have somebody's nephew be the handyman that could just reinstall the contact wires. It's, or it's a referral source for them. They can have a painter who's on call and refer business to them. Now, what do you think that painter's doing when he's on a different business painting somebody else's windows? He'd say, oh, Mr. Dave, looks like you might need some windows. I know a guy, Yeah. right? So it'd be a great referral opportunity for them as well as enhancing the wow experience for me, the customer. It could end up being a referral source for them because maybe they got an alarm guy on call. So the alarm guy could have come over. And then when he's on a different call and says, oh, I'm putting in an alarm, but it looks like you got rotten windows. I know a guy. And it's, it could be a small profit center for him. He could say, look, I'm going to send, I've got an alarm guy um, and I have a painter. And, you know, if he knows if he's got a fixed cost with the alarm guy and a fixed cost with the painter up front, it, he can, he can quote it at a markup and it's a small profit center, but yet the client ends up happy. All I'm saying is they have to do, they must install windows every single day. So surely, I don't know how many people have an alarm. Is it 50% of people have an alarm? So 50% of the time they come across this issue, right? And yeah. I don't know how many people's trim is different color than white because these windows come in white but maybe it's 50% of the time people have a different color trim than white, right? So they're doing a set of windows a day and they're half the time have to be coming up with these two issues and how easy would it have been to, again, provide, like you said, provide the solution, whether you did it themselves or they referred it out or they at least made me aware of here are things that you're gonna have to get handled once we're done with the windows. It happened, you know, I used to, um, my mom and dad lived in Wisconsin and I lived in Florida and I used to hate when my mom would, would call somebody to the house to have something done. And I was, all, I said, mom, you gotta, you gotta let me help you with this because, you know, she had a furnace replaced one time and they left the furnace in the old one in the basement. 
And I called the guy. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What? You tell me one other client, you leave the furnace in the basement. And, he, and they said, well, we, you know, we charge extra to cut it up. I said, no, you don't. You are going to get that. <laughs> I mean, but that's my point is that, you know, if it's, if it's me and you, it's not as big of a deal, but you got to think of all the people who, who struggle with these type of things. And if you're in business and you're trying to help somebody, you, you want to, you want to take it. If you're not going to take it the extra yard, if you're not, Nope, we just do windows. We don't do paint. We don't do alarm. We don't do any of that. Then let your customer know that up front. Hey, by the way, you're going to have, you know, Mr. Hutchins, we don't paint the windows. So here's, Four painters that you can call, or you can call your own painter. Here's four painters. Here's five alarm companies that you can call, but we don't do that. It, Which is it, totally fine. Which is totally fine. It's acceptable as long as you acknowledge your weakness, because that's what you're doing. You, instead of running from your weakness, because that's what that's what it sounds like they were doing. Wow, we got their money. We're they, man, we did a great job. No, you left. You left two details. You know, it's like. I got I got uh, got my tires rotated um, at the at the uh, GMC dealer, and they left one little screw cap off of one. <laughs> the, air, the air little air cap. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And it's got me pissed off because it is such a small detail, but I I mean you don't expect that from the dealer. Right. Right. So surely somebody should have been given that one more, the once over. If I noticed it, I mean, I didn't notice it when I picked up the truck, but you know, cause I was trying to get out in, in track, but sure enough, walk by it and you know, cause it's on the passenger side front wheel. Yeah. 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 Until I was on the passenger side, I didn't notice, you know, it was one of those things The the companies who it shouldn't be the extra yard. It should be the final yard. It, it, you're not going a yard past the end zone. You're not in the end zone until you've taken care of all the little details. That's, right. that's the point behind this is how do you lose money after the sale? Well, I, I'm guessing you have more than the eight windows on the front of your house. That, that's exactly right. So, <laughs> so we have more opportunity for them over the coming years to replace the rest of them. No, and, that, yeah. and that's really funny. So we talk about the three elements, right? You have to have three things to have a good business. You have to attract the clients. And we talk about ways to attract the clients. You got to deliver the wow experience. We always talk about that, delivering the experience uh, or the service. And then we talk about um, scale and um, I talk about scale and service. And that's kind of the ongoing follow up, or, you know, uh, trying to get referrals, what I call orchestrating referrals to, to do that. And hopefully they'll do that. You know, hopefully they'll follow up and ask me what it was. And, and I'll be nice. I'm not mean, but I'll be constructive. Hey, you missed a great opportunity. Just like we talked about here, you missed an opportunity to, one, make me aware of it. Two, a chance for you to give a referrals. Or three, a chance for you to make extra money on the, you know, on top of this. Um, so, and I'll do it in a nice way. But like you're saying, if 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 you don't ask for feedback, then they wouldn't know this to correct in the future. But if you were in another, like you said, the HVAC guy that that left the the furnace in your mom's basement, you know, you're not likely to refer that guy next time, right? So sure. he's screwing up the whole back third of his business, the, the scale and service. He screwed it up. The right? worst part, Matt, the worst part is it's a, a guy I've known since high school. Oh no. It's his family business. And it was like his nephew who did the install. And I'm like, oh. and I called him, I'm like, how? You know, <laughs> but that's, that's also the point that, that, that I talk to with my girls all the time. Right. And we've mentioned this before, right. That, that three ways to make money. You, you solve a problem for somebody, you add value and you're willing to do what others aren't and go back to that third one, willing to do what others aren't. How easy is it just to take the furnace out? How easy well, it's probably is it? really hard to do it. That's probably why they didn't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but I mean, again, make that should have been part of the service. If, if you're the only one doing it or the only one not doing it, that's how you differentiate yourself right? If, if, if you're the, if you're the one providing the wow experience all the way through the end, that's what Disney is known for, right? So Disney, the, the Disney park and all that is, is known for providing a great time for the kids and the parents. Yeah. Right? It's funny you bring up Disney. Um, you know how many churches, I can't think of the name of the book. Uh, there's a book that Disney wrote. I think it was, uh, might've been Eisner who wrote it, but it's all about the client experience. And 
churches, I'm talking, you know, evangelical Christian churches read, they, they like make their, their people read the book because it's no different. You're trying to create this once in a lifetime experience because it, well, it, it's not always going to be once in a lifetime, but you want every time um, Michael Port says it this way, you want to roll out the red carpet every time your client is, is willing to spend money with you. You know, the red carpet experience, you know, you lift the rope, you let them in, you want to make them feel special. That red carpet experience is so important. I got to give you an example. I bank, um, I, I do personal banking at uh, Vistar Credit Union, which um, is here in Jacksonville. And the first time we signed up, I like I came in and and I get up to the counter, and I'm pulling out my ID, and she goes, "We don't need the ID." And I'm like, "How do you not need my ID?" She goes, "Well, I have your picture right here on my screen. It's this big right now. It's uh, the whole upper left hand corner of the screen." And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. He goes, yeah, when you signed up, remember she took the picture of you. So we don't need IDs because I've got your picture. So if somebody besides you comes in, um, we, know it's not, we know it's not you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. I'm like, wait a second. I've got an account at Bank of America. I'm not saying that Bank of America doesn't have this technology. But they always, they never address me by name. They, because when, you know, they... I shouldn't say that once you, they have your information, but they always ask for ID. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The same technology. It's a customer service choice in this case, which I think is part of that. Wow. That red carpet experience they're trying to give you. And no, that's a, that's a great point. And that I was in this example, right? That, that, that the first thing I start with was how to enhance the wow experience of a dental office when I'm coaching the dental office. And it, it's one of the simplest things is people love their name. So when you walk in the dental office, it's great to say, hey, Dave, how are you doing today? Hey, Mr. Mulvaney, how are you today? And if you know something personal, hey, how are those kids of yours doing, right? That that greeting when they come in the door is fantastic. Or that same greeting, like at my own dentist, when I'm leaving is when the lady asks me, oh, how are, you how are your two daughters, right? But that, that leads to a wow experience for me as I'm leaving the dentist and paying my $1,000 of dental bills. I feel okay because she asked me how my kids are. <laughs> it enhances the experience, right? So I'm trying to bring this back, which was how do you lose money after the sale, right? And, and, and it's by falling short during the wow experience. It's bringing it to the very, very end. They did so many good things. We talk about educating and motivating. They have a video sales letter that helps convert and helps consistency. And they know they're giving their message delivered to the, the customer, to the prospect like myself. They do a great job of putting these things in clean up after themselves and they just drop the ball. Like you said, it's like forgetting the little air thing on your, on your tires. But right? let's, let's pause for a minute and let's, yeah. let's look at, okay. If you're, let's just say you're the window company now and you are, how do you get your people to do this? I mean, this is not, it's not very hard. I mean, I, I think you should make a checklist See, because a lot of people are really lazy, but anybody can follow a checklist. Yes. And if, if the checklist, if you send a technician to the job and the last two things is, um, did you notify the customer um, about painting? That should actually be done before that, you know, but, but yep. the salesperson says, did you notify the customer about painting? Um, did you give them the, the referral list of painters? Let's just say they don't do the paint. Sure. Um, and then, uh, the client uh, signs there, you know, yes, oh. I gave yeah, you. Yeah. So I think it's good to have the client, uh, you know, put their initials or something. Yes, they gave me this. Did I give you this? Yes. And so your checklist is initialed by your client, but now your client understands your entire process. In, in my last company, we, we created a process, uh, basically a process diagram. And we would, um, we would explain the entire process to the client prior to the sale. Then when they got the sale, we would again explain the process. And then after the sale was done, we, we went through a checklist to make sure we did the entire process and it had to be signed off by multiple people in our organization so that we made sure we did everything possible to take care of that client and that the client knew the process. 
And now everything outside of that process, how did the process change? Same way this happens. Oh, somebody was upset because we didn't do this. Um, I'll give you an example because this is when we do an LED lighting job, um, we would always take away all the old fixtures. And we had a client call one time and said, I wanted those old, the warehouse fixtures. I wanted those because I, yeah. and I'm like, well, we haven't thrown them out yet. So if you want them, you can have them. We'll have somebody bring them by. But we never had that as part of the checklist. Ask the client if they want the old, because some, some of that's hazmat. You have to properly. Sure, sure, sure. So, so we never had, but that became part of the checklist. Do you want the old fixtures or do you want us to dispose of them? Right. Right. We dispose of them. We don't mean throw them in your dumpster. We're going <laughs> to, you know. You know, this is, to me, what you're talking about, and I've actually done this in, in, my, in one of my other businesses over here in the exact same fashion, which was now what you've created is a unique experience for your customer, right? That, and a differentiator of how you're different, yeah. right? That you have a checklist that describes your process and they're signing off along the way. So you're educating your client, your prospect that there is a process and how many of your competitors have a process. And oh, by the way, how many of your competitors, you know, jointly sign, I sign it and you sign it at the same time, right? Well, it's important to understand everybody has a process, but when you record it, you become unique. You become unique, right? And so like on my, one of my businesses, I have the, the, the 10 deliverables. Right. So these 10 deliverables are things that I'm already doing. Right. Like you said, where we, I got a checklist. I just made it a formal checklist that I can go through with the client or the prospect. When you work with me, you will get these 10 deliverables each time we meet. Right. And so now other people might do that exact same thing. That's fine. But I have mine written out and we're going to go through it and we're going to go through it each time. And it's like, Wow, now that's something unique, as a strategic coach would call it, kind of your unique process, I think is what they call that. And so you can have your 10 deliverables, and they might be different than my 10, but mine are unique and you're unique. But you my know, point is, 95% of people don't have 10 client deliverables. 95% of people don't have a checklist for switching out the lights, a checklist for switching out the windows. You can easily differentiate yourself just by creating that checklist. Yeah, and I guess I'm going to give Dan Sullivan credit because I'm sure the unique process I learned in Strategic Coach. So, um, yeah, or the concept of it because. Right, right. Uh, and, you know, that's, but that's the experience um, is, never, is never the same because you're going to adapt to the market. You're going to change market. Right. But yet if you're always looking for um, how, the, how your client sees you through their eyes, you know, it's so important uh, because most of us, we see things through our own eyes. And, um, you know, the, I, I, I will say that the, when you are dealing with people in business, if you can see things through their eyes, you will create a far better experience than, um, than, than any, other, any other methodology because I mean, you, you walk into some, well, you, you, if you walk into your own showroom and you don't notice maybe paint is not right and, you know, just little things, if you don't notice those, the client does in many cases. You want well, to see. I, I think that's the easy way to dif differentiate it, right? So you could have looked at yourself as you're the window guy and how could I make it a wow experience all the way up to make sure the paint and the alarm is working when I leave the house, right? You can say that if you're a dentist, how do I make sure it's a great experience all the way through? Uh, I used this example before. Do you want to be the Lexus guy or the Jiffy Lube, right? So when I take, I have a Lexus, when I take it to the dealership to get the oil changed, it's a super awesome experience, right? If I take my daughter's car to Jiffy Lube, it's, you know, sticky, dirty seats with a remote that I can't change the channel on. And it's never all drink yucky. coffee out of their coffee pot. Yeah, I don't drink coffee. Out of their, it's a yucky experience. So do you I want to be the Jiffy Lube? Table. Yeah. Do you want to be the Jiffy Lube or the, or the Lexus, right? And we all want our businesses to be the, the Lexus dealership, right? But I think that's the differentiator. How would you want to be treated, right? I, I've got one of my, one of our friends has a, a home health care. Well, he did it because he had to take care of his mom, right? And so he didn't like the way whoever was taking care of his mom did it. So he started a whole nother company to take care of his mom. I've had people that started a home maid service because great checklist, completed checklist. This guy did a checklist and 
he wanted a checklist. This is what I want to have happen every time my house is cleaned. And I think there are probably other people like that that want a checklist when their house is cleaned. And that's what he did, right? So it's, it's creating your own experience, looking at it from the consumer side. If I were a consumer, how would I want to be treated? How would I know that it was done right? It's funny you say that. So um, I've stayed at many, like you, many different hotels. And I think it's the West in Atlanta that, that um, gave me a wow experience. Um, it was down there in Buckhead. Um, and when I was staying there, I can't remember what wasn't in the room. And, but I, I, I called down to the front desk and the, she literally, I said, Hey, uh, I think it was a, it might've been a hairdryer. I can't remember what it was, but it was just something, something that should always be in a room. Sure. So I called down to the front desk and the front desk lady said, hang on a minute. I can hear her banging away on the computer. And she goes, Oh, you're right. It's not checked off. <laughs> Literally, it, and that's the, the point is, the maids have a checklist when they go into every room. Right. Hair dryer. Okay, and my, if it's a hair dryer, it was part of the checklist. Even though it stays in the room all the time, they still have to check on it every single time. Remote control. That's what one of the things I said, so it, you know, and they had this whole checklist of things to make sure that that's in the room. Okay, well, that's the difference between a five-star hotel and maybe a three-star hotel. Is sure. that they sure. want to make sure your experience is above everything else. And, and how? A checklist. Exactly right. And it's great. And like I said, you, you can use that checklist to differentiate yourself and create a better experience, right? Great to have a checklist for your own people to make sure it gets done. But it's great to show me, the, cons the consumer, the checklist, because now that's, that's a different, that's a wow experience for me. That's a, gives me confidence that you guys know what you're doing. So, so having a unique uh, having your own checklist and sharing it, that could be your differentiator in and of itself. We're, Absolutely. We're, we're an HVAC guy and here's our 10 point checklist, right? We're a window guy and here's our 10 point checklist. We're a financial advisor or a mortgage broker. Here's our 10 point checklist. And you know, you don't have to worry about your competitors copying you because you'll always be different. As long as you're trying to see things through the customer's, customer's eyes, you'll always be different. Most people are trying to do just enough to get the client's money. And <laughs> when in reality is if you just go um, all the way to the end zone with them or go around them all the way around the bases with them, they'll go around the bases with you many more times. If you'll, if you'll just finish everything on your checklist, make sure that the client experience. And then after that, the client's happy with everything. Did we miss anything? Right. Tell how me, can we do it better? Yeah. yeah. How can we do it better? If we right. missed something or did, could we do this better? Please tell us because we want to make sure we do it better the next time. And, and if you're upset about something, the best time to, to find out when your client is upset is right after they gave you their money. If you wait months and months and months, you see them, you see them out at a restaurant. Too late. It's too late. You got it. You got to find out right away. So that's pretty good. All right, man. Uh, where can we find you? Matt, you can find us um, on iTunes at Profitability MD. Oh, I like that. Yes. And Spotify, uh, Spotify Stitcher, Spotify, Stitcher and all really of good. those. Uh, you can find us, uh, find me at davidmulvaney.com. And here in just a very short period of time, you'll be able to find us on profitabilitymd.com. And where can we find you, Matt? Perfect. So get me at Matt Hudgens over at LinkedIn and then uh, 10xprofitblueprint.com. Uh, 10xprofitblueprint.com. I got a cool little video series on the three biggest marketing mistakes businesses make and how to avoid them. Awesome. I recommend you get that. Matt, good job. Take care. See you.